Panorama TV presents How They Do That, where we explore the world of professional photographers and share their techniques with you. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of How'd They Do That? Well, in past episodes, we've had some amazing guests on the show, and unfortunately, we don't always have time to tell you everything that they said. And so this week, we're gonna air some of the clips that didn't make it into previous episodes. We're gonna be talking to Ab Cisse, David Bean, Kelly Kerr, Jason Wallace, and Gene Lauer. We're gonna start with some stuff that Ab Cisse told us. Specifically, I asked him about his use of the x rite Color Checker Passport. I use the x rite Color Checker Passport so that I always have a base. So that, because I found now I'm always either doing something where I'm like desaturating or I want the color to be true to what the situation was, meaning if it's magic hour, I want it to be a little warmer. But I use a color checker so that I can always go to neutral and then adjust from neutral to get the desired color that I want. Well, we also had David Bean on the show, and I noticed in his portfolio that a lot of his images had colors that were very complimentary and very well composed. So I asked him if that was something that he brought with him from his advertising background, or if he just used what he had on hand to make that work. It was an evolution because when I started shooting, I kind of got into that whole desaturated thing that was, you know, hip for a while, and I tried black and whites, and then just kind of over time, I realized that I really like color. I, I love color, and it kind of unconsciously kind of became my thing just to really um, play with colors and bump up the saturation when everybody else was desaturating. And um, I noticed that it's probably one of the things that I'm most known for is my use of color. And, and uh, you know, we live in a colorful world. I just, I don't know, I'm just kind of, I'm, I'm more of the warm, I guess I'm more of a uh, West Coast versus an East Coast. East Coast to me is always kind of like cold and hard and that New York fashion thing. I'm more of like a West Coast style. I like it warm and sunny and colorful and bright. And that's just kind of my personality. So I guess it comes out. Now, I also asked David Bean about some of his images that looked very underexposed. In fact, in some images, we couldn't even see the faces of his subject. So I wanted to know if, if that was something that he proposed to the client or if it was rehearsed or how exactly that came about. Uh, sometimes you work with an art director and they'll draw exactly out what they want and tell you here it is and just do this exactly. But more often than not, I don't know if it's art directors have gotten lazy or what, and they've got their iPhones, they sit in their couch now while you're shooting and just play on their iPhones. And so a lot is left up to me, and I'm just, if you leave it up to me, I'm gonna just go crazy. And so um, I'll, I'll always get the shot they want, and then many times I'll be like, well, there's the shot you want, now let me try this, and I might underexpose it or make it more moody. Or, you know, there's, I did this one shot, the, the guy on the website who's uh, laying in the water, looks like he's dead. He's, and that was my idea. I really wanted this dark, moody shot of a guy laying in, in water. And uh, so I went and bought a bathtub and, you know, just went crazy. And they never used it. There wasn't really, it were, you know, but it was at the end of the day. We had already got what we wanted. And I just did it for me. And, you know, he, that's the only shot of him I have on my website. You know, they got what they wanted. I got what I wanted. And so it was a good little marriage. And so... Yeah, I just get, get creative if you have enough time. In another episode, I was talking to Kelly Kerr about his Phil Marshall video that he shot at South by Southwest. And specifically, I wanted to know if it was all ambient light or if he added some fill light to the video. I was lucky because the, the, re, the recording room or the tracking room itself uh, was had, we had cans mounted on the ceiling which provided light. And what I basically did is I went in the day before we started the shoot and kind of figured out where I wanted the mu musicians to be positioned and then we basically pointed light on on the drums, on the piano, where we thought the guitar player would be, where we thought the vocalist would be. Now what we ran into is Phil was pretty easy because Phil came in and it was just him and a piano player but at certain points of the week we had um, a, a reggae band that had four horn players, three guitar players, so we had as many as 10 people in that little space at one time, which really made the shoot <laughs> a little challenging. But for Phil, it, it was nice because uh, the room already had the lighting built in. It was just a matter of tweaking and then pointing, aiming the light where I wanted it to go. But I, I didn't want it to look um, uh, too produced. I, would, I wanted it to be kind of all, like as if they were just to walk in off the street and we were there shooting them as is. I was speaking to Jason Wallace in one of the episodes, and Jason is a faith-based photographer, and so I asked him about that and how it impacts his photography. Well, my faith is 
kind of the core of who I am and um, it plays into anything that I do and as a photographer um, being able to partner with faith-based organizations that need um, imagery and need support and, and video and whatever kind of collateral that they need to t help tell their story that's what I want to be a part of so when I get the opportunity of, with an organization to go and tell their story kind of through my interpretation and through my eyes um, and they and they find value in that and it, it also gives back to me it allows me to um, you know, it's one of those things, it's, it's more blessed to give than receive, and, and I come away so much more full after giving um, than just taking, and so it's, a, it's a, just a way to give back. In another episode, we talked to Gene Lauer. Now, Gene is the full-time professional photographer for the Arizona Cardinals, and I asked Gene if he had any tips for parents who want to take pictures of their kids playing sports. Two suggestions that I would give are for one, to work with light when you possibly can. A lot of soccer games, baseball games, all that take place outdoors. If it's a beautiful sunny day, keep the sun at your back. That way your kids are all in the light and your camera will operate a lot better for you capturing the shutter speed at a faster rate. Even if that means going to the opposing side? Sure, shoot that way. sure. A lot of times I'll go, even as a Cardinal team photographer, we'll mosey on to the other team's <laughs> sidelines and sometimes I'll be met by a lot of boos and cheers and stuff, but at the same time, you gotta go where the photos are at. The other thing is to look for isolated action. In sports photography, the most important photo to get is the athletes by themselves. So whenever you get a chance, if your kid is playing soccer and running to the sidelines, that might be a great opportunity to get some photos of her, him or her um, by themselves. Right, so it's, it's not so much, it, the play is important. What happens before and after the play is also important. E exactly. That emotion and exactly. the celebrations and those types of things. And that's the thing, you gotta always keep shooting. Even during timeouts or when the whistle blows, that might be some right. of the best photos to get. Personally, as a sports photographer, my favorite photos are always the more emotion shots than right. the peak action photo. I think those are just more telling. Well, thanks so much for joining us for this episode of How They Do That. I hope you enjoyed the mashup this week. Well, remember, we're always looking for great photographers to feature on How They Do That. So if you have any suggestions, please send those to me at askmark at adorama.com. And we'll have another episode for you next week, and I'll see you then. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue.